click the bell icon to get latest videos from ekida hello friends i welcome you all to the subject digital image processing this video is from chapter number 3 of this subject earlier we are covered with two chapters for digital image processing chapter number 1 introduction to digital image processing and the second one digital image fundamentals so up till now i hope you are very much clear with what exactly the image is it is a two dimensional data moreover we are working with the digital image so discretization is there with respect to the spatial dimensions as well as the intensity value so in the digital image fundamentals we have seen various types of images right from binary image to grayscale image color image multispectral image so i hope all the fundamentals with respect to digital image and with respect to the processing fundamental steps of digital image processing are clear with us in this particular chapter we are working with the mathematical tool that are very popular to have different digital image processing applications that are image transform so very first of all we started with what exactly the need of this image transform is and then we followed that particular topic with the first image transform two dimensional discrete fourier transform as of the subject engineering mathematics and signal processing is concerned i hope you are very familiar with the family of fourier series fourier transform discrete fourier transform fast fourier transform so computation has been made simple as well we switch from time domain to frequency domain here we more concern from spatial domain to that of the frequency domain in this use of discrete fourier transform we work on to the image data which is a two dimensional signal and we represent it with the help of frequency coefficients that are in the complex domain so we have seen properties also we have seen the simple application of this 2d dft onto the image sample and seen the results with the help of matlab software we followed it with the second popular image transform that is discrete cosine transform as of we know that the representation with the help of discrete fourier transform is with the help of complex coefficient we in the discrete cosine transform use the real coefficient that makes some of the simplicity but still we switch from spatial domain to that of the frequency domain convenience is of course that for example we know that the complex procedure of convolution is a simple multiplication as we switch from spatial domain to that of the frequency domain so after discrete cosine transform we have learned the haar transform it is a very basic wavelet transform we can say very potential tool where instead of the infinite time duration sinusoids we have a limited duration wavelet with varying frequency now in the previous videos we have the walsh transform that makes very much simplicity as it has only the logic levels of plus 1 minus 1 0 multiplied by the under root 2 here we can say so now we have the matrix or the basis calculation for the walsh transform also let us take another transform which is somewhat different from the walsh transform the transform is called hadamard transform so let us begin with the topic so our topic is hadamard transform one of the more popular image transform more simple one in the domain of digital image processing so talking about hadamard transform as we are going to have the comparison with the previous one walsh transform we can say that hadamard transform is basically same as the walsh transform only the difference is that the transformation matrix is reordered so transformation matrix holds the coefficients with respect to the transform so while working with the matrices that particular transformation matrix is multiplied worked on to the image sample as a matrix to generate the transform matrix where which is convenient for the storage purpose as well as for the transmission purpose so it offers many of the advantages so what is the change as we reorder the transformation matrix of walsh transform let us see here next point we can say that the elements of the mutually orthogonal basis vector of hadamard transform are either plus 1 or minus 1 
See, for any transformation matrix of image transform, the necessary condition is that the basis vectors should be orthogonal. No part of a single basis function should be there into another one. So, they should be individual one so that they are able to represent that particular signal. If the coefficients are stored, they should be able to regenerate that particular signal for concerned application. So, of course, for the Hadamard transform also, the orthogonality for basis vectors is there and they are represented with only positive one and negative one that are very simple values to represent here. So, no complex representations are there. The representations are very simple. So, having the Hadamard transform, we can say that results are the very low computational complexity in the calculation of transform coefficient. This particular result is occurring with respect to the complex, uh, computational complexity because of reordering of the transformation matrix of the Walsh transform. Next, we have two dimensional Hadamard transform because specifically our signal, the information is image sample a two dimensional one, hence we can call 2D Hadamard transform. So it is very simple to have like the two dimensional Walsh transform here. Next, the 2D Hadamard transform. So here we have the two types of transformations, the direct one which switches us from spatial domain to that of the frequency domain and from frequency domain back to the spatial domain we call the inverse transform. So here we have the formulation given by here on to the left hand side we have the capital H in bracket U comma V. These are the two parameters for the two dimensional transformation. RHS is given by 1 upon capital N, N being the order of transformation matrix. Here we have two summation signs. The first one for the first parameter X ranging from 0 to N minus 1. Second for the Y parameter ranging again from 0 to N minus 1. Here small f of XY represents our image sample and it is multiplied by this particular square uh, matrix term. You can say that it is kernel of that particular transform. So it involves i that is i ranging from n minus 1. So two dimensional Hadamard direct transform is given by following formula. So here we have h of uv onto the left hand side here we represent. So u and v these are the two parameters for two dimensional transform. So this is into the transformed domain we can say onto the RHS it is obtained by having the multiplication of 1 upon capital N. This capital N is the order of the transformation matrix. The two summation signs for the two spatial coordinates X and Y these are ranging from 0 to N minus 1 Y also 0 to N minus 1. The F of XY small f of XY always represents the image sample into the spatial domain whereas the capital letters are used to re have the representation into the transformed domain. So this image sample f of xy is multiplied by this particular square bracket which can be called as kernel of this Hadamard transform matrix. So it involves pi that is ranging from 0 to n minus 1 minus 1 to the power here we have b suffix i of x b suffix i of u summed with b suffix i of y b suffix i of v. So for the spatial coordinates x and y for these uh, binary basis we can say these have been multiplied by these the basis for u and v also. So this is the direct transformation with the help of Hadamard transform. We can have another type of representation for two dimensional Hadamard direct transform that is given by this formulation. So again we represent onto the left hand side capital H of uv. It is given by the same portion that is capital uh, N into the denominator multiplied to the two summation signs for one for x ranging from 0 to n minus 1, y also ranging from 0 to n minus 1. Now this f of xy is multiplied by the kernel that is minus 1 to the power. Here the summation sign is there i ranging from 1 to n minus 1 for the summation of the two terms that is bi of x into bi of u summed with bi of x with bi of u. 
so these are the two another uh, alternative ways to represent the direct hadward transform next we have two dimensional inverse hadward transform so this inverse transform helps us to get switch back to the original or parent domain of representation so let us talk about this is also identical to the forward two dimensional hadward transform next the 2d that is two dimensional inverse hadward transform is given by following transformation formula so this formula is given here so whatever the image sample that we used to represent with the help of f of xy into the rhs of the previous slide formulation for direct transform has been here into the left hand side so we need to recover back the original image sample into the spatial domain hence the spatial uh, coordinates we represent with the help of x and y so this is achieved by having this much of operation into the right hand side so here the very basic important thing is that the transformed image sample with the help of two dimensional hadmer direct transform should be available so that is represented here by h of uv so it is operated with the help of this particular kernel given by pi for the ranging of i is equal to 0 to n minus 1 over minus 1 to the power bi of x into bi of u plus bi of y into bi of v here so this is also multiplied with 1 upon capital n the order of transformation matrix with the two summation signs for the two special coordinates x ranging from 0 to 1 n minus 1 and y also ranging from 0 to n minus 1 we can have another representation also so here to the power of minus 1 instead of this pi we have the sigma sign for i ranging from 1 to n minus 1 so i hope it is very very clear to understand the two dimensional direct hadmer transform as well as two dimensional inverse hadmer transform next we have uh, talk on to the properties of hadmer transform so very first of all we shall be very much clear that the most of the properties that we have seen with respect to the walsh transform two dimensional one are also valid with respect to the two dimensional hadmer transform because the change into the two transforms is only the order of transformation rows and columns uh, into the transformation matrix of the walsh transform and that of the hadmer transform next the hadmer transform differs from the walsh transform only in the order of basis functions as the transformation matrix holds the basis function coefficient values we can say next we have the order of basis functions of the hadmer transform does not allow the fast computation if it is using a straight forward modification of the fast fourier transform fft next capital h of n if it is representing the hadmer transform matrix of the order capital n so it shall be given by capital h suffix twice n that has been generated by the help of h of n h of n h of n and minus h of n so therefore we have to start from the small hadmer matrix so we can compute the hadmer matrix of any size like this so this is the very good reason to use the hadmer transform hence this particular property is called as recursive relationship of the hadmer transform so if we have the h suffix 2 so 2 by 2 order hadmer matrix if you have with the help of that particular one we can directly place it into these three parts and the negation of the two uh, of that one in this particular portion gives us the hadmer transform of higher order so this is called as recursive relationship of the hadmer transform that is very much important here now let us talk about the next point that is ordered walsh and hadmer transform to talk about what are actually the ordered transforms we can say that the modified versions of the walsh and hadmer transforms form by rearranging the rows and transformation matrix are actually the ordered transformations the sequence here increases as the index of transformation increases next the ordered walsh or hadmer transforms exhibit the property of energy compaction 
whereas the original versions of the transformations do not. So among all the transforms of this particular family, the ordered Hadmer is the most popular due to its recursive matrix property as well as the energy compaction. So here we can summarize the topic. We have seen the similarity of the Hadmer transform with respect to that of the Walsh transform that we have already covered with. Next, the computational efficiency we have addressed as we have reordered the rows of the transformation matrix of the Walsh transform to obtain that of the Hadmer uh, transform, the computational efficiency is affected. Next, we have due to the recursive relationship of the Hadmer transform, it is not desirable to store the entire matrix here, only a small portion we can have to uh, produce the Hadmer transform of higher order. So next lecture, I am going to address the slant transform that is another popular image transform in this particular subject. So I hope you are understanding it well and for the more details and the topics, you can subscribe to EKEDA channel. Thank you.